Good morning, friends of Murray Church. The grace of God be with you. I greet you in this season of Lent. As we gather, we pause and we ask God to help us to be open to the Spirit's movement. We set aside the anxiety of today, the regrets of yesterday, and the worry of the week, and know that this hour has healing power. The prayer, the silence, the word, the returning to the God who gave us life, new life in Jesus, abundant life in the Christ, and life that is eternal, that is meaningful, that is purposeful, and forever. Thank you for being here. Let us worship the Lord our God. Pilgrims, we are invited to journey through the season of Lent towards the one who calls us each by a new name. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone fills us. Disciples, we walk with Jesus where he leads, putting our fears, our doubts, our longings behind us. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, God alone fills us. Believers, we seek to trust God who always surprises, whose promises take on flesh and blood and call us to be blessings to the world. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, God alone fills us. Be with us as we journey in worship closer ever to you, O oh God. One of the blessings of having Lent happen when there's a lot of snow on this ground is that I get to do my favorite Lenten practice, going out and walking in the snow, especially on beautiful days, and especially with my best friend, Angus, my puppy. 
Angus loves going for walks with me in the snow. Sometimes I have to bundle him up in a jacket. But one of the great joys of realizing the goodness of God's creation is walking with Angus and his friend Benny in the snow, listening to the crunch of the snow under my boots, listening to the birds sing, watching their happiness as they prance around in the snow with the blue sky and the white snow appreciating all the goodness that is God's and this great gift we have to have good friends, pets as friends, and them as friends, and to be able to enjoy the beauty of creation with them. It's our favorite family thing to do and our favorite family practice to pray as we walk with our friends. Amen. There is much that we are praying for this morning. We have learned of uh, diagnoses and illnesses of parents of young children this week. We have learned of young people still dealing with COVID and uh, the fear that that brings. We are aware that our young people are frightened. We are aware of the uncertainty. And so we are privileged to carry everything to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious and most holy and life-giving God, even in the wilderness season of Lent, remind us that the wilderness is a place where people who ha have claimed power, that the wilderness is a place where people have found safety and refuge. Remind us there is a spring there of water. If only we'll wait and wander and watch for it. In this day, Lord, we are ever mindful that people are suffering, grieving, facing diagnoses, the end of their days. We are ever mindful that people are leaving behind children and losing their kids. Some of us know exactly what that feels like. Some of us cannot bear to wonder. Meet each and every one of us precisely at a point of need in our own lives. As we recognize you in the wilderness, hear the voice of your angels often manifest in us. Remind us that we are your hands and feet. Remind us that we are here to do your work. Remind us that you have given us a voice and power to be honest and truthful, self-reflective, because we are not perfect. And so we're grateful for the gift of Jesus who teaches us the way and the Bible that tells us complicated stories that we are called as your people to unpack, ask the harder questions that we might be able to speak to a world that is turned off or unaware or don't understand. It is our job, O oh God, to be your people, responsible with your word, grateful for your presence, empowered by the ability to hold the tension in the wilderness and so as we gather this day, we do join together in the song and the singing of the words you taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be.
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory Church, here are announcements for the day. Well, this afternoon at 12 noon, our community and global outreach group meets via Zoom. You can get the link on the website. Please join them. If you're interested in learning more or participating in the outreach and mission ministry of Morrow Church, we're so grateful that they are keeping it going. And as a reminder, this is the last day their collection of headsets for immigrant students is uh, available. It's on their website, the link. You can sign up and click right on Amazon and order a headset for those students who are doing virtual learning where it's hard in a household to hear and concentrate on a screen all day. Headsets make a big difference and we're grateful for all of you who've participated in that collection. We also have a large number of small groups running for Lent. It is not too late to jump in and join any of them. And I'm going to go ahead and give a an quick overview of them, but make sure you take a look at the website for more details for the Zoom links and uh, more about the leaders and also to sign up so that we know you'll be joining us. On Sundays at 9 a.m., our adult discussion group is um, looking at a curriculum called Roll Down Justice, looking at justice songs in our church with the music of Mark Miller. Our cooking group gathers at 4 p.m. today. Uh, I believe today that they're making some soup. So join in for them. You can get the recipe in the shopping list on the website so you're all set and prepared before uh, the cooking class begins. At 7 p.m., our prayer bead group meets. They are praying with beads. Um, it's a beautiful way to center ourselves during this time of Lent and enter into prayer. And if you don't have the beads, don't worry about it. You can get them anytime, but feel free to jump in and join the group. At um, 8.45 this evening, we have a group that is looking at the songs and poetry of racial justice. A beautiful time to center ourselves in this important work through the arts and to give us some um, vocabulary and some inspiration, especially for those of us raising children. On Mondays at 7.30 p.m., we have a group, Sisters in Faith, looking at an Amy Jill Levine study called Entering the Passion of Jesus. It's a study of Holy Week. That's at 7.30. On Tuesdays, Pastor Janice leads a wilderness Bible study at the lunchtime break. So jump on during lunch at 12.30 and join her. And then our contemplative worship, a wonderful time of silence, music, words and scripture for us um, goes live via YouTube about 6 p.m. On Wednesdays, we have a group that is reading I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown. That's at 5.30, and you can jump in and join that group. Also, the Zoom links, again, are all on the website. On Thursday mornings at 9.30, we have a group reading the Barbara Brown Taylor book, Altar in the World, and looking at all the ways that we can find sacred space and spiritual time with God in our daily lives. On Saturday, we have our walking group led by the Vaughns who are taking us around the community with some Latin reflections, times of meditation. They walk beginning at 10 a.m. That's 
IRL in real life, that's not via Zoom. Our men's discussion group meets at 4.30 on Saturdays. And at 5.30, we have another racial justice um, book, Long Time Coming. That important text, um, a group of people are working their way through. Feel free to join them at any time. It's important work that we're doing as we prepare after Lent for the journey of hope that Mara will be doing as we move towards racial justice in our community and most importantly, in our congregation. All of that is available on our website for more details. Now this afternoon, at uh, 4 p.m., the um, Community Coalition on Race is um, offering a webinar, a discussion on um, co the COVID vaccine and the Black community. Feel free to jump on that or pass that information on to those who you think may be interested in hearing that. Um, and they're also looking for people to participate in some discussions regarding how we can make sure our entire community has access and availability for vaccines. So please take a look at that. That connection is also on our website. And just a heads up, summer is coming. At least it feels that way a little bit this week. And we're happy to announce that our high school group will be participating in the Christian Outreach Project from June 27th to uh, July 2nd, so the end of June, beginning of July week. Um, please take a look on the website for information about that. We will be um, helping make homes warmer, drier, safer in Northwestern New Jersey. Um, we will also be offering our neighbor to neighbor program as we did last year where our we will all be helping um, with outdoor projects of seniors in our community uh, right here in the Maplewood, South Orange, Irvington area. And we'll be doing Neighbor to Neighbor August 2nd through 5th. And right after that, August 9th through 12th, we will be offering our Vacation Bible School, Come to the Table. I'm so excited about this program and this camp. We're gonna be foodies, we're gonna be thinking about food, all the teachings of hospitality, radical hospitality that Jesus let us know at the table. We'll also be learning about food insecurity and helping out those who are doing great work getting food justice done in our community. So good stuff here at Morrow Church. Thanks for listening for our announcements.
Egyptian, her slave girl, and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my slave girl to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Your slave girl is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her and ran away from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave girl of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am running away from my mistress, Sarai. 
The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will so greatly multiply your offspring that they cannot be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Now you have conceived and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, for the Lord has given heed to your affliction. So she named the Lord who spoke to her. You are Elroy? For she said, Have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? Abram was sixty, was eighty-six years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. And from Genesis chapter 16. When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you through their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Gracious and most holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be ever acceptable unto you, my Lord and my Savior, my rock and my redeemer, foundation of my life, and the cornerstone of the church that brings us together. Be a firm foundation for us as we seek to open your church and value and enrich the lives of all your children. This we pray and say thank you and amen. This week marked 500,000 deaths to COVID. 500,000. Half a million people lost, families grieving in our communities and throughout our country. We are in the wilderness. South Orange and Maplewood schools made the primetime network news this week. Our school board is suing our teachers union, if I understand it all correctly. Families are in crisis. We are in chaos. And none of this bodes well for our kids. The stress is real. We are in the wilderness. Tiger Woods had another accident again this week. His body, our hero's body, broken again. Serena Williams lost her match. We are in the wilderness. Even the Bachelor franchise is under fire. In an interview with Rachel Lindsay, longtime host Chris Harrison revealed his own ignorance with regard to race matters, about racism in the South and about the progress that we should have made by now. He has excused himself and rightfully so. And Matt James has had to contend with the harsh reality of a woman he cared for and said she cared for him. We are in the wilderness. I watched the framing of Britney Spears about the conservatorship and the campaign on social media by average people to end the conservatorship, giving her father power over her and her 
finances, her fortune, to revisit how Brittany was treated by the media, by both men and women, is to once again be shocked by what we see. Just beyond the groundswell of hashtag me too, women continue to be mistreated, judged, abused, while the men remain relatively unscathed. We can watch our own behavior, constructing and manipulating gender in this world. Within our culture is a wilderness of oppression, systems, and structures that need to be overcome, that work against God's people wrestling and wandering in the wilderness can be exhausting, but it can also be exhilarating and empowering. We are thirsty in the wilderness and there is a spring there to quench our thirst. When I encountered the lectionary for this week, I wondered about it, and it seemed wrong to me to focus only on that of Genesis 17, to focus only on the renaming of Abram and Sarai and the promise made to them. As if only one chapter earlier, the story of Hagar is not found. It seemed wrong to me to not give attention to a story of the wilderness while we are on our own Lenten journey in the wilderness. Hagar's story is told here in chapter 16, and then again in chapter 19. She is an Egyptian slave, mistress of Sarai, and she is property given to Abram to bear a child, a son. Of course, jealousy ensues. Hagar is pregnant, a surrogate with no protector. She is abused, she is mistreated, and she escapes to the wilderness. She is the first person in the Bible to be found in this sacred and symbolic space in the midst of trouble, impending death, perhaps, and destruction. The wilderness is like a pandemic, both alienating and isolating, but there is a spring there and the pregnant slave girl is free there. She encounters God there. The angel of the Lord appears there with much good counsel for Hagar. There God makes a way where there has been no way. God the way brings life and survival. When we are thirsty, there is a spring in the wilderness. Dolores Williams is a black womanist theologian, author of Sisters in the Wilderness. She writes that there is no biblical image that's been more appropriate than Hagar in the wilderness for representing the plight of African-American men and women 
antebellum and postbellum history throughout. Nothing links the story of African-American women to Hagar like their own religious experience in the wilderness. As the result of these hard time experiences, Hagar and many African-American women take refuge, manifest a risk-taking faith where one's consciousness is thoroughly saturated with God, in God, because there is a spring there. From the 17th to the 19th centuries, in the dominating white American culture, two primary attitudes towards the wilderness were in effect. In earlier years, American pioneer culture, for them, the wilderness was presented as a hostile place unfriendly to humankind that needed to be conquered, a cursed and chaotic wasteland that needed to be conquered. Centuries later in the antebellum period, romantic uh, views of the wilderness rose up in America and flourished so that there was a great public concern for the preservation of the wilderness. So it's probably not surprising that the spirit of the slaves, and of course, the people, were in direct conflict with what white culture was projecting about the wilderness. When slaves were beaten by their masters, the wilderness became a safe place and a refuge and friend. That unfriendly and chaotic place was a refuge and friend where Jesus could be found, where vegetation and fruit would sustain their lives, where plants and herbs would heal them. After emancipation, the world and the wilderness turned hostile to African-American people, freed people, shaped by new experiences of economic insecurity social displacement, and the new forms of oppression, where black women must go to seek a living for their families in an environment that was hostile to them. A community still struggling today for survival, for freedom, for their own nation the promises that were made to Hagar, whose son gives birth to Islam. Might there be a spring if we too could reclaim what we have done in the name of God, what we have done to hold people back in the not highlighting of the stories of the women and their plight, of not highlighting the stories in the Bible without shining a light on them. Hagar is unique for so many reasons. She is the first to be found in the wilderness. She is the first to find freedom from the oppression and the abuse. She is also the first to name her God, Elroy perhaps acknowledging that maybe she couldn't be worshiping the same God. My God cannot be the same God 
of the slaveholding, abusive oppressor. We don't know, but the work is worth pondering because there is a spring in the wilderness for us to quench our thirst for understanding and wonder about the scriptures and the history and all that has happened that has not provided freedom for all God's people where we can be saturated with God's love in a quiet place, even a lonely one. In our ignorance and grief and longing, in our grappling and outrage at the injustices that we see still. There is a spring somewhere, a spring in the wilderness where God, the way, will make a way where there has been no way before. And God needs us. It is a spring of truth that will set us free. We are thirsty in the wilderness, thirsting for the truth to be named and spoken. And there is a spring there in the wilderness for you and for me. There is yoga for our troubled children to still their quiet minds and their bodies. There's a spring there to settle us all. There is contemplative worship for us to become quiet, observers of our own thoughts and a space to cultivate the ability to hear God, the angel of the Lord, speak to us. There are prophetic writers and documentary filmmakers who inspire us to understand more, to reflect on history, distant past and all too recent. There is a spring there. And there are more ordinary people who re realize our extraordinary gifts. There's a spring there. And there is leadership in Washington who took the time to mark our grief and pain, who adorned the White House with candles and light, marking the traumatizing milestone, pausing for the silence we have longed for. There is a spring there. I pray today that you are saturated with God and by God, with Jesus in the wilderness. I pray today that you will call or text someone and remind them that God will make a way where there has been no way before. I pray today that you will speak up and speak out against injustice, however it presents itself. We worship a spring. And you, my friends, are made of living water. This day and every day, amen and amen.
Go now in peace, my friend, from your screens. Shut down, log off, click pause. Go out into the world. Call someone, text someone, remind them that they are made of living water, that there is a spring in the wilderness, wherever we are. Wherever we are, wherever you go, whatever you do. And so go out into the world and know that you are loved deeply by God and by the people of this church with whom you worship. Go out into the world and know that Jesus came into the world to do this work of reconciliation, of turning the light on, the way, the truth that will set us free and give us the life, full life, we are called and blessed to live. Go in peace. Amen.